Okay, I'm back. That one messed up. I forgot to cut my mic off. You were probably getting an echo. So, let's see if I can do this one. Privacy. Public. Done. Okay. That looks like that's right. And the privacy. Public. Done. Here we go. Okay, I believe we're on. Okay. Sorry about that one. I have forgotten to take the audio off the mic here, this one. And it would have had a bad echo in it. So now let's dial it in. Let's see. Okay. Now we're going to be talking about. As I said before, this is 4,000 questions and answers in, about, uh, in the Bible. And we're counting down the last seven days of Jesus' earthly ministry uh, before he went to the cross. And today we find ourselves with the Lord in the garden. And here are some of the questions. What and where was Gethsemane? This is a garden on the slope of the Mount of Olives near Jerusalem where Jesus and his disciples often retire for rest. I believe that uh, Mount Olive, that's the, uh, it's a great wine press, oil press or something like that. That's what that means. What was Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane? A prayer of the overburdened, overburdened human frame for relief, but joined with the prayer of the devoted heart that God's will be done. I believe he said in the garden, uh, uh, the flesh is willing, as we'll read again here, the flesh is willing, but the spirit is, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he also went up there with his other disciples, two or three, couple of them, and he wanted them to be with him. They wanted them to be with him while he was going through these troublesome times and for his uh, comfort. And uh, we find this a lot when you go visit people in the hospital. Uh, there may be not a lot you can do for them except just be there with them. Just be there when they can look over and see you or hold their hand while they're going through what they're going through. In this case, uh, Jesus left his, I think it was Peter and John, and left them in the uh, outskirts of the garden and he went on right into the middle of it and began to pray and I believe you know he says uh, this cup he says don't let it pass before me he says nevertheless uh, not my will but thy will be done he says for this moment this hour I came I into the this plan and Jesus had a moment a reflection where this is the final phase before he was going to be betrayed that evening by uh, Judas at the Last Supper. So Jesus goes back to the garden outskirts and with the disciples are waiting and they fell asleep. And so I believe this happened two or three times. And the last time he came, he says, uh, sleep on tonight. One of the times he said, could you not pray with me at at least one hour. And I have a little saying here that I go by and my tongue talking stuff. I pray in the spirit at least one hour a day. That's mandatory for me. It's not the law or legalism, but I try to get uh, my prayer language going for at least one hour a day so I can release that river. Okay, so let's go back. The burden of sorrow that pressed on him at the thought that 
he was laden with the sins of mankind. I guess he was, all of them. Huh. Oh, gosh. Did he have sympathy of his disciples? He found them sleeping, but Luke, the physician, says, for sorrow. I don't know. Luke says for sorrow, I don't understand. Uh, maybe they were trying to understand what Jesus was going through, but I don't believe they knew he was going to be betrayed that night. Anyway, next question. What command did he give to them and what excuse for them? Here he says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes, watch and pray. Watch and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And uh, I think it's the seventh chapter of Romans. Paul goes into a, a discourse about, I find uh, that when I want to do good, there's this law warring in my members that makes me do wrong. He says, there's a struggle going on. And he says, who can deliver me from this? And his conclusion was the Son of God. The Bible says we can mortify the deeds of the body by the Holy Spirit. Okay. And we're going to go over here. The betrayal and the arrest. Who came with Judas on to the garden? A band of soldiers and the authorities from the temple. Well, they've just omitted the Last Supper here, but we know it's the Last Supper. Uh, perhaps uh, the Last Supper was before Gethsemane or vice versa. I'm not quite sure. Question eight or, or seven. How did Judas betray him? He said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him as a sign. And I believe Jesus said, Thou betrayest me with a kiss. So six months of a laborer's uh, pocketbook back then was $24. Now, it's 1910. This guy's writing this book here. and But you had to work basically six months to get, make 30 pieces of silver. So that was quite a lot of money, especially on the common labor, half a year's wages. But poor, unfortunately, Jesus was uh, selected beforehand because God knew uh, he would be the weak one that had this terrible, terrible uh, mantle fall on him about the one who betrayed the Christ. So, verse no, oh, chat, question nine. What shows Jesus' majesty of appearance at this time? Those who come to arrest him all went backward and fell to the ground. Yes, he said, whom seek ye? And when he said that, they all fell back to the ground. Uh, I guess you could say they went, passed out under the power of the Spirit. I guess you could say. And uh, that must have shocked him. And during that time also, uh, it was Peter that cut off Malchus, the servant's ear in the garden. And he rebuked Peter and says, put away your sword. Okay. And... Uh, he says, I, he says, I'm he, so he says, just let these others go. And that's essentially what occurred. And they marched him off to the first courtroom, the Jewish courtroom, at night. And it says, where was Jesus' first trial held? At a hastily called meeting at the Sanhedrin and the great council of the Jews at the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. What terrible thing happened? Well, let me get it up here. Peter denied three times to Jesus. Well, they went to that trial or that kangaroo court and they accused him of being a liar because uh, he said, Thou makest thyself to be equal with God. Of course he was, but they didn't think that was cool. And 
they took what Jesus said about raising the temple in three days of that 50 year temple it took them to build. They didn't understand that, so that was another false charge. But the Bible says they, because of envy, they delivered him. Envy, job security. And during this time, from uh, Caiaphas court, because uh, he they didn't get their pound of flesh from him, they wanted to kill him, but the Jews who were under occupation at that time of Rome, Rome did not could not uh, perform capital punishment, so they wanted to take him to Pilate, so Pilate could pronounce judgment on him and have him crucified. So they hustled him out of there and took him to Pilate court, woke him up in the middle of the night, told him it was an emergency, and he comes out at the Palladium, and here's the charges, and uh, essentially they say that he makes himself to be uh, the king of the Jews, which he is, but they didn't feel that way. And another charge was, uh, he, uh, to they told uh, Pilate that he, if you sided with this man, uh, you'd be regarded as uh, siding with uh, Rome, be against Rome, if you didn't offer him up. But here it says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and it was between the first courtroom and the second that uh, Peter denied the Lord three times. And of course, it uh, carried out the prophecy. Uh, uh, Peter says, I mean, Jesus told Peter, he says, Satan is desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed that your faith fail not. He says, but when you're converted, he says, go strengthen those who remain. And that's exactly what happened. Question 12, was Peter forgiven and restored? Yes, after the resurrection of the Lord, what was the charge varied by the Sanhedrin? Blasphemy, he is worthy of death. Okay, that's what they said. What became of Judas? He returned the money to the priests and he went out himself to be hanged. Well, that's true. He had a change of heart. I think Judas, uh, because he was a thief and the accountant, the treasurer of the ministry, uh, he thought like Barabbas, a political bandit already busted here in jail, uh, they thought there was this mindset that he was going to lead some sort of revolt uh, that by the flesh they were going to take uh, charge and restore uh, Israel to its rightful place. But Jesus this time he come as the lamb and not as the lion of Judah. He's coming this time as a meek lamb to suffer and die for humanity uh, and bear all our sins on this cross. So it says, to whom did the Jews take Jesus for condemnation? To Pilate, the governor of Palestine. What consistency is shown in John? It says they were intent on crucifying their promised Messiah, but they refused to enter the house of a Gentile because to do so during Passover, feast would defile them. Oh, I see something here. I knew if they entered into a uh, Gentile's household or their sanctity, sanction there, that it would defile them, but here it says uh, during the Passover feast. So possibly they could go into a Gentile's house if it wasn't during the celebration here, uh, uh, celebrating the Passover feast. That's what I learned from there. What charge did the Jews bring now? Treason against Rome because he forbade giving tribute to Caesar and he claimed to be himself a king. It's kind of like President Trump catching all that slack about uh, the insurrection there. That insurrection was really a mob storming, uh, storming a, a government piece of property. I don't think it was that big a deal. It was a person lost a life there. That's a tragedy, but generally speaking, it was just a, tr uh, a charge, a bogus charge, to try to get Trump convicted of something so he couldn't run for president. Unfortunately, it didn't work. What charge do the Jews bring now? 
treason against Rome because he forbade giving tribute to Caesar and he claimed him to be himself a king. Well, we know that's a lie right there. Remember, the Pharisees tried to trap him. And uh, he says, we asked Jesus, uh, who, what about offerings or something like that? And Jesus takes a coin and he looks on it. And when he shows him this coin, he says, whose image is on this coin? Well, it was Caesar. So he answered the question of render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God. So them accusing him of uh, giving tribute to Caesar, evidently, just by God's own witness, that uh, that wasn't true. Was there any truth in these charges? No, the first was a falsehood, and the second was a misinterpretation. That's true. Why did they not bring now the same charge in which they had themselves condemned him? The Romans would not consider that a cause for punishment. I guess that would probably be uh, the death sentence. Why did not the Jews do not Pilate? Why did not the Jews do as Pilate said and punish him themselves? The right to inflict. Well, let's see. Capital and punishment had been taken from them. I just mentioned that by the Romans and nothing less would satisfy them. Wow. Did Pilate with, wish to condemn him? No. He tried many times to persuade the Jews, and the Jews and Jesus was an innocent man. Praise the Lord for that, and should not be put to death. But the Son of Man had to die and suffer and be, uh, in the hands of men. Question 22, could Pilate have refused to condemn Jesus? He certainly had the authority, but was afraid of the accusation of the Jews. Well, that's when they said, if you don't side with us, you're gonna be considered, uh, you won't be considered a friend. Whom did the Jews choose instead of Jesus? Barabbas, a popular leader had made an insurrection, there's this guy against Rome, and in it had committed murder. Okay, so Bravas actually was the only person that Jesus personally uh, died for on the cross in terms of uh, the cross that was uh, going to, Jesus. Barabbas was going to hang on that day. Uh, he was set free by the vote of the people and Jesus was put on that cross instead I wonder what every, how he felt about that. We'll never know. And he got cut free. He got pardoned. So one man was pardoned and one innocent man was crucified by Savior for our sins. What happened when Pilate condemned Jesus? The soldiers put on him a scarlet robe, the royal color, and on his head a crown of thorns and mocked him uh, before I guess that was before he got flogged he got 39 stripes say one because if he went over it was really 40 stripes but they stopped at 39 because if you they thought he got more uh, stripes than he was supposed to get then they would get in trouble so they says the soldiers put him on a scarlet robe the royal color and his head a crown of thorns and mocked him. What final appeal did Pilate make? He showed the Jews, the Jews that suffering that Jesus crowned with thorns, but it was useless. Okay. Okay, here's the crucifixion itself. What was done with Jesus? He was crucified the death of a slave. What petty revenge did Pilate take on the Jews? The placard which he bore, a little sign right there on, the, on his cross, bore the crime with the suffering. It read, the King of the Jews, and it was written in three languages. 
What were the seven words from the cross? Wow. Seven times which Christ is recorded to have spoken. Seven words, excuse me. While he hung upon the cross. They were, and it goes through those. You notice I'm not really cutting away and commenting on the crucifixion. It's such a reverent thing. It's such a beautiful thing that there's not a really a lot one can uh, uh, say about what happened here uh, except just read the scriptures and just absorb it yourself. Uh, it's, it's not a really a lot of a thing you can expound on. If you do, you can get real heavy and, and, and I would uh, I'd go down a rabbit hole and never get back uh, when I'm getting into these seven things Jesus said. So, let's all, I'll let you take a look at that real quick. There's the scriptures. You can take your phone and take a picture of that right there if you want to know the seven things. Yeah, okay. What signs accompanied the crucifixion? A great darkness from noon till three o'clock and the, re and the reading in two of the of the veil of the temple and of the rocks of the earth. Where and by whom was Jesus buried? Joseph of Arimathea, until then a secret disciple, begged his body from Pilate and laid it in his own new tomb. Well, what happened on Saturday of this week? The disciples rested and Jews asked and obtained from the Roman governor a watch of soldiers to prevent the disciples from stealing the body. And here's the resurrection days. So I'm not going to uh, get in on the resurrection here this morning. Uh, I want to thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, I don't really feel like I'm prayed up enough. I come to the studio here and you know, I didn't have, I'm not under the law, don't get me wrong, but I, uh, I feel like uh, my anointing's not here to expound a lot on this uh, uh, crucifixion, the days of crucifixion. So I just, just read it, I just read it, and let it speak for itself. And uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about the resurrection. And that's after three days, God raised Jesus from the dead. What all happened? We can get into it in more detail. So from the hill, that's Mars Hill, Manchester Village, Indianapolis, Indiana, my wife and I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And we wish you above all things that you would prosper and be in good health. Have a good day. Have a blessed day in Jesus. Bye-bye.